Hey, thanks for watching CNN 10. Our daily 10 minute shows are on pause for the summer, but we will be posting clips like this Monday through Friday until our regular programming resumes in August. So please enjoy, and to get notified of our content, please like and subscribe to this channel and keep up with us at CNN10.com. This is my granddad, and he bought our farm in the mid 30s. On the plains of southern Arizona, Nancy K. Wood's family has farmed this land for four generations, part of an industry that generates more than $23 billion a year for the state and uses a lot of water. About 70% of Arizona H2O goes to agriculture. Our water is just full of silt and it would constantly be clogging drip lines and sprinklers. And so the water in our irrigation district is flood irrigation. Depending on where you live in Arizona, your water can come from rivers, reservoirs, or from wells, all of which have been impacted by a 20-year mega drought fueled by the climate crisis. Most of the Colorado River Basin has been in a shortage condition for much of the last 20 years. It's common to have variability with short-term droughts, but this is much longer than what is considered common. There is clearly the fingerprint of climate change on this drought, primarily because of increasing temperatures. What we do know is that when the temperature increases, we actually see a decrease in flows in the rivers. The water for Kaywood's farm flows 100 miles from the San Carlos Reservoir. The water levels there have been dangerously low since the mega drought started in 2000. In some years, it's gone completely dry leaving a stain like a bathtub ring. The river systems in Arizona are in jeopardy, period. If that is the only source of supply for a farmer, then clearly the impact of climate change on water available in the reservoirs is a critical consideration. If it's not there, you're not irrigating. So here's gonna be the main canal. Then this is gonna all be cut off. While farmers have been growing cotton in Arizona for a long time, with the support of government subsidies, raising such a thirsty crop in the desert has become all the more controversial. Either way, Kaywood had no choice but to let 100 acres of potential cotton or even less water-intensive alfalfa turn to dust. We're gonna have to carefully choose what we grow and how we're gonna water it. And so when we're watching weather forecasts and we're seeing no water coming into the lake, and the dam levels continue to go down, we're gonna become very concerned. Her neighbors share that worry. Across the region, fallow fields have transformed the landscape, a sign of larger change that may already be here. When I'm driving around here and I see all these housing developments going in, it's almost heart-wrenching. It, it almost makes me wanna cry. It is so sad when a big store comes in or a shopping mall or a housing development and it's been put on really good farmland. Located about 60 miles from Phoenix, this farmland is near one of the fastest population booms in the nation. It is prime real estate. And according to Kaywood, without enough water, farmers are selling to developers, or in some cases, solar companies. I completely understand what happened. This drought doesn't appear to be ending anytime soon. And it just finally got down to where there was really no choice to go ahead and sell. We've been approached on sales, but the dollar amount wasn't where we wanted it. And we'd really rather farm than to have somebody put solar panels on our farm. What's happening on Kaywood Farms could be a sign of what's to come for other farmers in Arizona. 25 miles to the west, Dan Thielander's crops have been spared from the mega drought so far. The water just runs in through that gate and runs out into the entire border. He can access water from Lake Mead, the country's largest reservoir by volume. It holds Colorado River water for several states in the West, but in the drought, water levels at Lake Mead are at record lows, and Arizona's share may be reduced by 30% next year based on a federally approved drought contingency plan. Farmers like Thielander could be among the first to face cutbacks. The only alternative we will have is to plant less acreage. So this crop of triticale that you see behind me, in a couple of years, I don't think that we'll be farming this land. It'll be fallow because we won't have enough water to farm all of our acreage. 
To offset that loss, the local irrigation district is drilling new wells at a cost of nearly a million dollars each. But in a drought, groundwater can also become scarce. Thielander thinks he'll only get a fraction of the water he has now. We'll have to lay off employees. We won't be buying as many seeds or fertilizers or tractors. And so we'll just have to scale down and operate a smaller farm. And so, yeah, it's, it's going to be real bad. Here it comes. The Kaywoods are unable to drill a well, so for now, the only way they can hold onto their farm is to lease some land down the road with access to Colorado River water, which is also running low as snowpack gradually disappears. They plan on growing corn to pay the bills and make it through another season. You know, we're going to hang tight as long as we can. It's in our blood. We love it. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter at CNN10.com and we'll see you in August for daily episodes of CNN 10. I'm Carl Azus.